Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we heard in our epistle reading of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is our righteousness. Grant us today to see your Son as our righteousness, not as an example that we must live up to and fulfill, but rather as the one who has fulfilled everything for us. We ask this in his name. Amen. The text for this morning's message is the Old Testament reading, this collection of ten, depending on how you count them, sayings, that together we refer to as the Ten Commandments. Grace and peace to you all from God our Father, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, So I'm curious, how many of you know this song? Now, first service, eh. second service, well over half. Um, But the the kind of hook goes like this. It's the final countdown. How many of you know that? Raise your hand so we can see. Oh, second service had you beat. Well, uh, I have to apologize to Erica because I've been singing that song, or that little part of that song, all week long. It's been stuck in my head. The final countdown. Because today I wanted to share another countdown with you. Today I wanted to count down to your perfect righteousness. And so we begin the countdown with ten, nine, you shall not covet. How are you doing on ten and nine? If you're like me, you have a very hard time keeping your eyes and your desires off other people's stuff. We are very good at looking at and admiring just about everything but our own things. Scrolling through Facebook. Oh, what a a great vacation they're having. Wish I didn't have such a lousy job. Wish I could take that kind of a vacation. Or a husband thinking to himself, wow, look at the way she treats her husband. I wish my wife would treat me with that kind of respect. Or a teen girl receiving the latest selfie Snapchat from her friend, thinking to herself, I wish I could be that beautiful with no filter. (laughs) You see our tendency, whether it's beauty or luxury, or money, we always have the tendency to cast a sideways glance and to desire something that someone else has for our own. But Jesus did not cast that covetous glance. He kept his eyes fixed on what was his. In the weeks leading up to his death, the Bible tells us that Jesus set his gaze toward Jerusalem, toward the cross That was his. And even though the Son of Man, the scripture says, had no place to lay his head, Jesus never desired or envied another man his resting place. When it comes to these commandments of coveting, we have failed. But take comfort. Today I I wish to show you not Christ, your example. You can get that idea straight out of your head. Today I wish to show you Christ, your righteousness. To show you that what you have failed in, Christ has fulfilled. And he has done it perfectly. And he has done it for you. Eight, 
You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Please, I've seen your Facebook posts, please. And you've seen mine. You know that neither one of us can stand for a moment to put the best construction on the crazy thing that politician said. To put the best construction on what those social activists did. No, it's never the best construction. It's always the worst. You know how quickly we rush to cast blame. To point the accusing finger and to speak the worst. You know the rumors about others that lie buried in your text message history. And then we have Jesus. We have Jesus standing over the body of a woman caught in the very act of adultery. And he doesn't point his finger and say, everybody, come look at this wretch. You've got to hear what she did. That's so terrible. He doesn't harm her reputation further by posting it all over social media. No, he says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Friends, we've failed this one. But take heart. This is not Christ your example. This is Christ your righteousness. Where you have sinned, he has not. And he gives you the credit. Seven, you shall not steal. Sure, you don't steal. But maybe stealing is more than taking. Maybe Stealing is not giving when I could. Uh Uh-oh. Maybe when I brush off that conversation, when I ignore the, the hurting look in their eye as they seek to talk for a moment because I'm too preoccupied with my busy work day and all the things that I want to get done for, for my good. Maybe I'm stealing Stealing my help and my presence away from a neighbor who needs it. Because I slip into thinking that life is all about me getting done what I want for my sake. That wasn't Christ's attitude. The Bible says the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give. To give. Christ was not focused on taking for his own, but giving to others. And he was not too busy to do it. The Bible says that even in his busiest times, when he saw the crowds of hurting people, he had compassion on them and he went to them. Even in his busiest moments. Now, if that sounds hard to live up to, you're right, it is. Don't worry. Rest easy. This is not Christ your example. This is Christ your righteousness. And what you have failed to do, He has done. And He has done perfectly. And He has done for you. Six, you shall not commit adultery. Adultery is what happens when we see others as a means of to fulfill our own desires. So, current wife, just not doing it for you? Well, then, guess you're in the market for someone on the side because people are only means to the end of emotional or physical happiness, right? I should be happy, right? My relationship should always make me happy, Right? This is our default way of thinking when it comes to relationships. But it is also the seed of adultery. And it's not what we're called to. Of course, Christ never took a wife. But still, nevertheless, 
He shows us what it looks like when this commandment is kept and fulfilled. St. Paul instructs us, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Even with his bride, the church, Christ kept the sixth commandment, showing us a love that serves the beloved rather than viewing them as a means to self-satisfaction. But even here, Christ's perfection isn't simply an example. Especially here, Christ's perfection counts as your perfection. Five, you shall not murder. And we don't, it's true. Unless we go back to those social media posts and text messages. Unless we examine the bullets that are fired from our keyboards. It's easy to delude ourselves into thinking we aren't violent people until we're face to face with a relationship that's been carved to a bloody pulp with the knife of our tongue. It's easy to think we're not violent people until we recall the genocide we practice when we angrily excoriate those people over there, that group, even though we know there are probably exceptions even within that group of those people. Yes, except for our thought bullets and word stabbing and anger genocide, we're sitting pretty good on this one. But actually, we are. Because even while he was being beaten within an inch of his life, Christ never raised his fist in anger. He took the blows. He took the death sentence. He didn't fight back. He kept this commandment perfectly. And he did it for you. In this commandment, we have floundered in unrighteousness. But he has succeeded in righteousness and given that righteousness to us. Four, honor your father and mother. This is hard to do. And not just as teenagers. When you get older, when you move away, get busy. I know it's hard to be the son of I should be. I struggle with this one. Sometimes life in a fallen world just gets in the way. But then I look at Christ on the cross with his lifeblood draining away. And there this perfect son continues to care for his mother. To provide for her. Even in his last Words, he commends her to the care of John. He fulfills perfectly what life in this world makes so difficult. And so, if you have an aging parent, if you wish you could care for them better, if you feel any weight of guilt, take heart. Rest easy. This is not Christ your example. This is Christ your righteousness. What you are prevented from doing, he has done. He has done it perfectly. And he has done it for you. You are not guilty in his eyes. You are innocent. Three, remember the Sabbath day. Oh boy. We flounder here too, don't we? Although, we are all here now, so that counts for something. Still, I can respect God's word on Sundays, not much difficulty. I think we can all think of moments throughout our week, though, when we start to despise it, to neglect it. And for me, that usually has something to do with a square, glowing screen. 
a talking, glowing box that has a mysterious way of shifting my priorities. It makes it seem so hard, so weird, to just get up and gather my family around a table with a Bible on it. How antiquated, how old-fashioned this box tells me. And very quickly, I'm sucked into neglecting the things of God in favor of the things of man. Even neglecting my family's souls in favor of dancing pixels. How pathetic. Especially when I compare myself to Christ. No scripture neglecting couch potato here. Did you see him in our gospel reading? Throwing over tables, causing a ruckus, all because the things of God dominate his life. When his disciples saw it, they remembered the prophecy. Zeal for your house has consumed me. What a contrast to us. And yet, If you are daunted by this contrast, take heart. This is not simply Christ, your example. This is Christ, your righteousness, achieving it perfectly for you. Two, don't misuse God's name. Perhaps our greatest misuse of God's name is to not use it. That is, to not call upon him in our trouble, to not pray, not to thank him for our blessings. We fail here too. Daily we fail to pray as we should. And yet even here, what we have failed to do, he has done. Where we have gone through our days, if we are too busy, too independent to ask our Father for anything, Christ has done it In our stead, he has prayed, our Father, who art in heaven. He has prayed with perfect attention, with perfect devotion. In fact, that's what he was doing when he reached number one. He was praying. Scared and alone in a garden, he fulfilled the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. See, we don't really know what it's like to fulfill this commandment perfectly. Our obedience is always fractured a little. There are always other voices dividing our allegiance. But in that garden, Christ demonstrated a complete, total obedience to the one true God. Anticipating the awful, painful cost of passing on his perfect righteousness to you. He prayed, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He had no other gods. He heeded no other voice, not even the voice of his human nature, anxious and worried, because his life had been a countdown to this night. The final countdown. The countdown to the victorious cry, it is finished. Done. The countdown to your salvation. This is how his righteousness, through all the commandments, became yours. His perfect deeds, his perfect obedience became yours. There is nothing to live up to here. There's no quota of perfection left to meet. There's not a single box remaining to check off your salvation sheet. It is done. Christ has fulfilled every commandment perfectly. And he gives that perfection 
to you. Amen. For those who suffer from hunger, 
homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty the Lord provides to support the church and to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are hospitalized, recovering from surgery, those who are facing chronic pain or long-term health problems, and all who suffer as a result of living in a fallen world, especially today do we pray for Sue Eichen, Kimberly Gildersleeve, Martha Fisher, Jeannie Roman, Terry Torgerud, and Steve Limbaugh. That God would grant mercy and perseverance as well as healing according to his good and gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all honor, glory, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be
and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
now and unto life everlasting. Depart in that peace with Christ and your righteousness. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.